we want to greet all of you this Friday evening in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have been charged by the leader of the Children's Ministries Department to interrogate a theme. I will go and this night I endeavor to locate myself to that theme. Uh, therefore, come with me to the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 17, 18, and 19. And I read in your hearing from the New English Translation. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. Verse 18, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Shall we pray? Babel was a lazy winny, live lacos and funzi will was a salona. Nabal for Nabaco, Balalele, Lisabetan, and it's in Otago. Tasenyamen, it as moyen, it as in Salweni, Yebon as in Contraining, a chess Amen. Words are a very powerful medium of communication. Words are a powerful tool. Words have the potential to destroy. Words have the potential to bless. When words are spoken, marvelous and wonderful things are, are made. Things that you never thought would happen, but out of the utterance of words, something dramatic happens. The Bible tells us uh, that this world was created out of nothing and out of nothing God spoke words and nothing became something. Psalm 33 verse 9 says the worlds were created by the power of the word that Jesus or oh God uttered at creation. Words have a power of changing things, have the power of making things happen. You see, the Bible tells us that Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus and told by Martha and Mary who said to Jesus, you, you cannot go even close to the grave because you've delayed for over four days and our brother sleeps in the grave, he's dead. The Bible says Jesus approached the grave and he spoke words and Lazarus resurrected. Words are important. Words are powerful. Words have a potential to make Big things happen, but at the same time, words have a potential of destroying that which needs not be destroyed. That's why James 3, 5 says we have this small human organ, the tongue. You see the tongue little as it is, but it has the potential of causing wild fires, fires that could destroy everything that is there. Just words spoken. Words are very powerful. Words have a potential to build, but at the same time, words have a potential to destroy. He comes to River Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. And John submerges him into the waters of Jordan. And upon coming out of the water, 
then a dove was sent from heaven and it came and rested on his head and then in heaven a voice was heard a voice which affirmed the son and this is what God said in public this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He affirmed his son right by the banks of the river Jordan just to say to the son, but at the same time speaking to the crowd, this whom you see standing in front of you is my son. And in this son of mine, I am well pleased. In other words, I am proud of him. With those words echoing in his mind, Jesus leaves Jordan and heads straight to the Mount of Temptation. And when he gets to the Mountain of Temptation, after 40 days and 40 nights, the devil comes when he was at his weakest to tempt him. Little did he know that this Son of God has he had been affirmed by his father. His father had said to him, whatever could happen, whoever says something to you, never doubt my father would over you. So the devil comes and tempts Jesus with food. But he says, preempting that temptation, he says, if you are the son of God, likely did he know that God had already buffered that situation, that utterance, that temptation with words of affirmation. Because the father had affirmed the son. The temptation could do nothing to the son. Even when he tempted at his weakest, when he needed food so much, after hungering for 40 days, and the Bible tells us that in response, Jesus Christ reminded the devil about the words which God had uttered. Can we just live but fail to remember that in our hunger, words that come from the mouth of God are important because men cannot live by bread alone. Words that come from God the Father are important that even when you are jobless, when you are hungered, when you have lost everything, he still stands, stands and affirms you as his son, he affirms you as his daughter. He says, this is my beloved daughter, this is my beloved son. Remember that Jesus is our elder brother. What God said to Jesus Christ, he says also to you, because you belong to God, because you are God's son, in whatever state you find yourself in, never despair, hold on. God will empower you. God will change your situation. You will conquer over every temptation that comes your way. Words are important. Words are important to Jesus Christ because even at his entry of his ministry, when he was faced with so much temptation, even throughout his ministry, he could still stand because the Father had empowered him. Words of affirmation. It is Gary Chapman in the year 1992 who produces a book entitled The Five Love Languages. In that book, he outlines the, the, the general things uh, that people who are in a romantic relationship need to understand in so far as how to express love and how to experience love now now one of the words of often one of the words or languages of love in that book are words of affirmation now chapman says words of affirmation are important when a person seeks to communicate love now behavioral scientists have since stretched the the periphery of, 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 of that book to include any other relationship that is there, be it a relationship between father and child, 
be it a relationship between mother and daughter, father and son, be it a relationship between pastor and congregate, be it a relationship between sister and brother. But what Chapman says, words of affirmation are important to be spoken by any person who values relationships. God valued the relationship that he had with his son. And because of that value, he says to his son in public, Son, I am well pleased in you. It is important for me as a pastor to hear a member who will come to me and say, Pastor, I care for you. To hear an elder who will come to me and say, Pastor, I love similarly, I need to also to come to a member. It doesn't matter the state in which the member is, just to say to the member, I am standing with you. It doesn't matter the situation the member may find himself with. It could be that the member has been ostracized by the church itself. But when somebody comes and says to that member, I am standing with you. I am supporting you. Look up to Calvary. God cares for you. That to that member is very critical. So when you affirm a person, it could be affirming a person before a temptation or before a situation, but it so happens that what you have said to the person before a situation turns out to disappoint you in the short run. But after a long run, when the cloud of foolishness has cleared off the mind of that person, then the person will begin to hear the echoes of your words of affirmation. That's who we are as parents. It is important to say to our children at a very tender age, Child, I love you. Even when the child loses it, even when the child apparently fails you, as long as the child remembers the words of the father, the words of the mother, the words of the parent who said in his experience of innocence that my father said, I love you and I care for you. That has a potential to resurrect the child into life again. The prodigal son comes to his father and says to the father, give me my stuff. And the father knew that the boy was asking for his stuff prematurely, but nonetheless, he gave the son what he had demanded. Now, it is my well-considered conclusion that when the father was just ready to allow the son to depart, set him down and said to him, Son, if it so happens that you get to the world and the world turns against you, remember you have a father in me. Come back home. If it so happens that the resources that you have now get wasted, remember that to me you've never been a waste. Come back home. If it so happens that friends turn their backs on you and you remain friendless, come back home. You have a father who loves you. Even when you are sent to a pigsty and you begin to smell like a pig, and when life has turned sour and bitter, it doesn't matter the state in which you are. Remember in me, you have a father who loves and cares about you. No wonder, therefore, brothers and sisters, when the, father, when the son stands up, and makes this deliberate decision of going. He knew the kind of father that was waiting for him. He knew the kind of father 
that he had. He knew the father would accept him on the basis of what he declared prior to his departure. He had the guts to go home, not to commit suicide out of despondency because he had a father who had assured him, a father who had affirmed his sonship and he stood up to face or to go to the father. Again, no wonder when the son came with a prepared speech, the father had no time to, to listen to that speech because the father knew that what the boy had written down is what he had already said to him before his departure. So to the father, the speech and what the boy had written was irrelevant because all the things that the boy said are the things that the father had said. I want to say to you, young people, as parents, we've gone your path, we've gone your route. We know everything that you're experiencing, maybe not in detail, but in principle, we know where you are. So when we say things to you, those things be sure, those are our experiences. That is why when we return to God and tell God where we've been, he has no time to listen to what we say because all the things that we say to him are the things that he wants us about even before we fail. We have a father who cares. When the son came back home, all that the father did was to cover the boy with the kisses of love and embrace that says, Father, son, you are welcome. I want to say to us, brothers and sisters, we have a God who cares for each and every one of us. On the cross of Calvary, he spoke words of affirmation, but in, dramatic, in a dramatic form, in which his son, Jesus Christ, stood crucified to say to us all, this is how much God loves. This is how deep God loves. For that reason, none should be prevented from coming to him. It doesn't matter what it is that could prevent you, but it cannot stop you from coming to him because he cares. That is why the thief on the cross was in a position to, Jesus, to say to Jesus Christ, remember me, it was done on account of what God has done for humanity. He loves you. He cares for you. He stands in your corner. Whatever it is that you are doing, Whatever state you find yourself in, never doubt the love the Father has for you. He sent Jesus Christ to die for you. Come home. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for the word and we ask that you may take control of our lives. It doesn't matter the state in which we find ourselves in. All that should keep echoing in our minds is that we have a God who loves us so much that He wants to see us home. He wants to see us in the New Jerusalem, celebrating the love that you have shown and you are shown to us even in our time on this side of eternity. Is our prayer in Jesus' name.